In this video, I'm gonna go over five supplements that actually have research behind them to back up their use for eczema. But stop, before you go out and buy these supplements, just remember that although these supplements have worked for people in the research, doesn't necessarily mean that they will work for you and your eczema. Creating a supplement plan that is specific for you and your skin is essential. Hello everyone, my name is Larry. Welcome to Fighting Eczema. If you search up supplements for eczema on the internet, you'll likely come across tons of random supplements that people claim have worked for them. Most of these supplements don't actually have research to back up their news for eczema, but that doesn't mean that they won't work for some people. For example, not a lot of studies have been done on turmeric and eczema. However, a lot of people who have eczema find that turmeric really does help to bring down their skin's inflammation. Anyways, in this video, I wanna go over supplements that actually do have research to back up their use for eczema because this means that they have basically a proven track record showing that they are effective against eczema. The first supplement on my list is probiotics. I want to start off by summarizing this meta-analysis that was done in 2018. Basically, researchers compiled and summarized 39 studies that all aimed to determine if probiotics were effective for eczema. Ultimately, this 2018 study concluded that probiotics make little to no difference when it comes to eczema. Now let's fast forward from 2018 to 2022. This new meta-analysis compiled six studies which included 241 adults suffering from atopic dermatitis who were of European and Asian origin. This study concluded that probiotics did in fact reduce atopic dermatitis in these adults as well as improved their quality of life. Fast forward again to 2023 and another new meta-analysis of 1300 atopic dermatitis adults found that probiotics did indeed reduce atopic dermatitis. I really like one specific sentence that was said in this 2023 study. The sentence is, the effect of probiotics in the treatment of atopic dermatitis is inconclusive partially due to the heterogeneities of atopic dermatitis. Basically what this is saying is that probiotics may or may not work because atopic dermatitis or eczema has many potential root causes. Microbiome imbalance is just one potential root cause of your eczema. If a gut microbiome imbalance is contributing to your eczema, probiotics will likely help heal your skin. However, if your eczema is caused by something else like stress or hormone imbalances, probiotics will probably do nothing to your skin. Again, this highlights the importance of creating a supplement plan specific to you. Another thing I wanna mention is that there are so many different strains of probiotics. Certain strains have been shown to be more effective for skin conditions. Going back to the research, studies that show that probiotics did not improve eczema may have been using the wrong strains. Anyways, I've personally seen that when my clients work on their gut health, their skin improves. And so if you haven't already taken a deeper dive into your gut health, maybe give that a try. The next supplement on my list is vitamin D. Studies seem to suggest that having a vitamin D deficiency increases your risk for eczema, especially in children. Let's briefly discuss this 2023 study that looked at the associations between vitamin D levels and eczema. This study is really cool because not only did it look at vitamin D levels in children, it also looked at the vitamin D levels of the moms of the children while the moms were pregnant with the child. Researchers found that pregnant moms with higher levels of vitamin D were less likely to have children with eczema. They also found that children with higher vitamin D levels were less likely to get eczema by the age of nine. So when was the last time you got your vitamin D levels checked? Here in Canada, if you do not supplement with vitamin D and you don't spend a lot of time outside, you will likely be very low in vitamin D. This is one reason why a lot of people who go on vacation to somewhere nice and sunny seem to improve their skin. I suggest getting some blood work done to determine if vitamin D supplementation is right for you. Fixing a vitamin D deficiency might just be the key to clearing your skin. Next up is another vitamin, vitamin E. Let's start off with this 2002 study. 50 people with atopic dermatitis were given 400 IU of vitamin E 
every day for eight months. 46 other people with atopic dermatitis were given nothing for eight months to act as a control group. Here are the results. Four people who took vitamin E had worse dermatitis after eight months. In the group that took nothing, 36 people had their dermatitis get worse. Six people in the vitamin E group had no change after eight months, while five people in the control group had no change. 10 people in the vitamin E group had slight improvement in their skin, while four people in the control group also had slight improvement. 23 people in the vitamin E group had great improvement, while only one person in the no supplement group had great improvement. And lastly, seven people in the vitamin E group completely cleared their dermatitis, while no one in the control group had complete clearing of their skin. So for the majority of people in this study who took vitamin E, their skin got better. Keep in mind that we are talking about taking a vitamin E supplement orally, not using a vitamin E cream. This other study on vitamin E and atopic dermatitis found that using vitamin E topically can actually irritate the skin rather than help. In the proper doses, vitamin E is a pretty safe supplement, so it could be worth a try for you. Just remember that in the study we just discussed, four out of the 50 people who took vitamin E actually got worse. I really recommend working with a healthcare professional to create a long-term supplement plan that's specific to you so they can also monitor you and make modifications to the supplement plan if needed. If you want to work with me personally to create your own supplement plan, you can check out my one-on-one -on -one coaching programs at fightingeczema.com. My coaching guarantee is that I will work with you until your skin clears and you don't need me anymore, no matter how long that takes. The next supplement on our list is a supplement called histidine or L-histidine. Histidine is an amino acid that is involved in your physical skin barrier. One potential cause of eczema is a deficiency or problem in a skin barrier protein called filigrin. Histidine has been shown to promote the production of this filigrin protein and therefore strengthen the skin barrier. This 2020 review looked at studies where people who had eczema supplemented with histidine. Researchers concluded that histidine supplementation is a safe intervention for people of all ages suffering from eczema. Now, with all of this being said, here's what you have to think about. Is your eczema caused by a filigrin issue? If yes, histidine supplementation will likely help. If no, histidine supplementation will probably do nothing for your skin. How do you know if your body sucks at making filigrin? Until genetic testing becomes the norm in medicine, you really have no way to figure it out. All you can really do is try supplementing with histidine and see if it helps. Again, it's best if you work with a healthcare provider to do this. Before we jump into the next supplement, I'm gonna ask you to hit the like button on this video if you're finding it helpful. You can also follow us on Instagram at fighting underscore eczema for more free information on how to heal your skin. All right, next up is a supplement called Evening Primrose Oil or EPO for short. People with eczema are often deficient in something called gamma linolenic acid or GLA for short. EPO contains GLA, so supplementing with EPO helps to fix any GLA deficiency that you might have. When it comes to studies on using evening primrose oil for eczema, results seem to be very mixed. I want to go over this 2018 study that was done specifically in South Korea. In this study, 25 people with eczema were given evening primrose oil while 25 other people with eczema were given soybean oil as a placebo. As you can see from this graph, the group who took the EPO had their eczema levels reduced after four months, while the group who did not get the EPO did not improve after four months. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind is that this study was done using Korean patients. If you look at other studies on evening primrose oil and eczema that were done in other places around the world, most of these studies will show that evening primrose oil doesn't seem to help reduce eczema. 
does that mean that evening primrose oil only works on Korean people who have eczema? Maybe. I'm kind of joking, but also not really joking. Honestly, research can be pretty weird sometimes. Anyways, it's possible that one of the supplements we just talked about will help you clear your eczema. If you want to learn more about how to heal your skin, check out one of the videos that has just popped up on your screen. Good luck, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.